Good morning, friends. Miss Lee here. And today we are reading a story called The Noisy Clock Shop. Now, if we look here at the cover, I see, I see lots of clocks. Lots and lots of clocks. Big clocks, little clocks. I see some reds, some purples, some browns, some golds. Which clock is your favorite? Which one? There's so many. I personally like the purple clock that's just next to our friend who's on the cover. It looks like that friend is doing something to a clock. Would you like to figure out what it is? Yes, let's see what he's doing. Oh, the noisy clock shop. And it looks like here we have some more information. The story is by Jean Hortenberg. And the pictures are by Art Seiden. Now the story is by our friend Jean Hortenberg. That means that she is the author. And our pictures, Art Seiden is our illustrator. That means they drew all the beautiful pictures we're going to see. And it looks like here we have a store called Mr. Winky Watches and Clocks. Same day service. That means when he brings something in, he can try to get it out on the same day, and he should be able to. Mr. Winky mended clocks. He took care of shabby clocks. Ooh, what do you think shabby means? Shabby clocks with dirty faces, poor old clocks with broken hands, and lazy clocks that wouldn't run. So shabby. Sounds like it might not be a good thing. It might be a, a yucky kind of thing. After he fixed a clock, Mr. Winky wound it. Then he put it back on the shelf to wait for its owner to come and take it home. Before we had digital clocks, which are the clocks with the numbers that we can read. You probably see this on cell phones or on the computers or tablets. There were clocks that ran on Gears, little circle pieces of metal that stuck together. And you had to wind it up so that they could run. And once they didn't work anymore, you might need to wind it up some more. Mr. Winky's clock shop was a cheerful place. The clocks on the shelves kept up a constant chatter. Tickety tick, tickety tick, said the little ones. Can you make that noise? Tickety tick, tickety tick. Tickety-tick. Talk, 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 said the big ones. Talk, 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 talk. The Swiss clock sang a tinkly little song. And the cuckoo popped out of the cuckoo clock and said, Cuckoo! 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 Do you guys see the cuckoo clock? I see the cuckoo clock. There's a silly little bird coming out of the cuckoo clock. The grandfather clock tried to chime first, but the cuckoo clock always beat him. One day, Mr. Winky was sitting at his workbench, enjoying all the tick, tick, ticks, and the talk, talk, talks, and the tinglings, and the ding, dongs, and the cuckoo, and the bong, bong, bong. When the door of the shop flew open. Hello, Mr. Glum, said Mr. Winky. What can I do for you? Oh, my, said Mr. Glum, sticking his fingers in his ears. How can you stand this awful noise? I was going to visit with you for a while. But I can't hear myself think. Goodbye, Mr. Winky. Goodbye. Mr. Glum pulled his hat over his ears and hurried out, slamming the door behind him. Uh-oh. What happened? How do you think Mr. Glum is feeling when he walks into the store? How do you think he feels when he decides to leave? What about Mr. Winky? How do you think Mr. Winky is going to feel now that Mr. Glum has left the store and is 
not feeling very happy. I think Mr. Winky may be feeling a little lonely or a little sad. At first, Mr. Winky laughed. <laughs> uh, then he felt hurt. He could have been a little more polite, he murmured. That's true, isn't it? Our friend Mr. Glum was not very nice. Then he tried to think of something clever to say to Mr. Glum next time he saw him. He tried and he tried, but he couldn't think of a single thing. Why, he cried, sticking his fingers in his ears. This place is so noisy, I can't hear myself think. He jumped up from his workbench, pulled his hat down on his head, and hurried out slamming the door behind him. Uh-oh. It's nice and quiet out here, he said as he walked briskly down the street. Briskly means he's walking very quickly. He looked to the right and to the left and was just about to step off the curb when squonk, a taxi horn blew and squeech, some brakes squealed. Mr. Winky jumped a foot into the air as the taxi whizzed by. Was that taxi driver being very careful? Oh, no. I don't think so. And Mr. Win Mr. Winky did the right thing. He looked both ways before he crossed the street. Whew, Mr. Winky said. That was a narrow squeak, he said. He looked up and down the street again and then stepped off the curb. Clang, 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 screeched a trolley car. Oh, boy. I don't think Mr. Winky is going anywhere today. Oh, howled Mr. Hinky Winky. He pulled his hat down on his head and ran as fast as he could to the railroad station. I must get out of the city, he said. It is so noisy I can't hear myself think. He bought a ticket to the country. As the train rushed through the countryside, he settled in the red plush seat and opened a bag of peanuts. Snap, crunch, 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 crunch. Mr. Winky ate some peanuts. Woo! The train whistled. The wheels clattered over the rails. Click, 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 click. The conductor punched tickets. Is this train very quiet? Do you think Mr. Winky got the quiet he wanted? Let's see. Oh my, said Mr. Winky, sticking his fingers in his ears. I can't stand this noise. I can't hear myself think. He put the rest of the peanuts into his pocket and got off the train at the next stop. Were you right? Did he like the noise? As Mr. Winky walked slowly down a dusty country lane, he saw a little red farmhouse. Come in, come in, said the farmer. You're just in time for dinner. Mr. Winky went out to the pump to wash his hands. Squeak! Squeak! Oh, that's not a good noise. The pump handle hopped up and down, and the cold water splashed into the bucket. Mr. Winky washed his hands. Do you think he said his ABCs as he washed his hands? And he went into the house. Dinner was delicious. Mr. Winky's plate was piled high with rosy ham, mashed potatoes, green peas, and applesauce. But the jangling of the knives and forks and the clattering of the dishes were too much for him. I can't stand this noise, he said, sticking his fingers in his ears. Oh my, I can't hear myself think. He finished his dinner quickly, said thank you to the farmer, and hurried upstairs to bed. I'll take a walk in the wild woods, he said the next morning. Surely it will be quiet there. Do you think it was quiet? What kinds of noises do you think he might hear? out in the wild woods. What do you think he may hear? Let's see. 
Ah, Mr. Winky said, this is more like it. At last, I can hear myself think. He set his hat on top of his head and walked briskly through the trees. <laughs> Clattered a red squirrel. Mr. Winky walked a little faster. Screamed a raggedy black crow, swooping down through the shadows. Mr. Winky began to run. Leaves crackled and branches snapped as he ran. Ouch! Howled Mr. Winky when he bumped into a tree. Ow! Howled Mr. Winky when he tripped over an old stump and... Oh my! Gasped, mis gasped Mr. Winky when he ran smack into a big brown bear. Roar, roared the big brown bear, sitting up on its hind legs. Uh-oh. Not only did Mr. Wingy not find quiet, he found some trouble too, didn't he? Mr. Winky turned about face and ran. Grrr, said the bear. Quah, said the crow. <laughs> said the red squirrel. I can't stand this noise muttered Mr. Winky, and, sticking his fingers in his ears, he hurried out of the wild woods. He hurried past the little red farmhouse, and past the pump, and down to the railroad station. There, he bought a ticket to the city. As the train rushed through the countryside, he settled back in the red plush seat and began to eat his peanuts. Snap, crunch, 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 crunch. Mr. Winky ate some peanuts. Woo! The train whistled. The wheels clattered over the reins and the conductor punched tickets. Mr. Winky got off the train when it reached the city and it started toward his clock shop. Clang, 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 screeched a trolley car. <coughs> screeched the siren on a big red fire engine. Swank, 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 honked a taxi horn. Oh my, this does not sound very quiet at all. Oh no. Mr. Winky watched for his chance, then scuttled across the street and hurried into his shop. He didn't wait to take his hat off before he went over to his workbench. But something was wrong. Oh, what do you think he figures out is wrong? What was the matter? Mr. Winky looked around. He looked at his workbench. All his tools were in place. He opened the drawer where he kept his money. All the money was there. He looked around for his glasses. Oh, they were right where they belonged, on his face. What could be wrong? Oh, said Mr. Winky. It's quiet in here. There isn't a sound. And sure enough, there wasn't a single tick or talk to be heard. The clocks hadn't been wound, and they all had stopped. Remember at the beginning, if you didn't twist the gears up, they would stop spinning, and nobody was there to spin the gears. I can't stand this silence! Wait. It used to be the noise he hated, and now he doesn't like the silence. He went right to work and began winding the clocks. He wound the big ones and the small ones. He wound the cuckoo clock and the grandfather clock and the dinky little Swiss clock. Soon all the clocks began to talk. Tickety tock, tickety tick, tickety tick, whispered the tiny little clock. So the big ones, cuckoo, 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 whistled the cuckoo clock. The grandfather clock chimed a cheery bong, bong, bong. And the Swiss clock never stopped singing its tiny tinkly song. Now this is the way. I like it, Mr. Winky said, holding a clock close to his ear. I dearly love a cheerful shop, and who wants to hear himself think anyhow? The end. So just because the friend wasn't happy, 
with how his clock sounded, Mr. Winky liked it and realized he missed it a lot when he didn't have it. Thank you so much for stopping in and reading with me. I hope you'll come back and read with me again tomorrow. I'll see you all then. Goodbye!